For this video, I'll be walking you through a simple and powerful technique to create pagination buttons. This component works great for static website web applications since it is JavaScript heavy. I'll show you something close to what Google uses in their pages along with a ton of tricks and algorithm solution you will enjoy. Show me your support by liking and commenting on this video. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. Now, let's jump into it. I have here a div container of class pagination buttons with a lot of buttons of class page button. The first two are for the start and previous page. I use the active class to mark the button of the current page. Then at the end, I have two buttons as well that will take to the next and last page as well. On the CSS side, a simple body style to center everything as you can see here on the right. As always, I box size border box everything. After that, I have a button reset style where I remove the background, appearance and border as well as give it a pointer cursor. Now let's style these buttons. And I'll give it a light gray background and dark color, make it 35 pixels high, round its corner and 10 pixels left to right. I'll also uppercase text and increase the space in between letters. Now for the container, I'll display flexed and vertically align everything with four pixels gap. Now, if you look at the classes, you will see that the previous next start and end pages classes all end with hyphen page. To target those, since they come less, I can say match class which ends with hyphen page using the dollar sign. If you want to target it in any position, you use the star while card. And for those buttons, I'll give them a slightly dark gray background, smaller font size, bold it. And for the active button, a dark bluish gray with a white text. If any button is disabled, I'll make it 30% opaque. Now, if it is not a special button like first, last, previous, and next, I'll set width equal to the height, 35 pixels. Then give it a transition for the background and like that, the button are ready for some JavaScript action. The first thing we need is a way to generate these numbers based on three information. How many total pages they are, how many pages we show at a time, and which page is currently active. The way I want is the current page number should be centered unless it is all the way at the end or beginning of the list. For example, if we have a total of 100 pages and we only want to show 10 pages for user to pick from, if current page is 1, then we say it is in the beginning of the list. And as soon as the page is greater or equal to 5, it should be placed in the middle. So if current page is 15, we show pages number 10 to 20, which makes the 15 in the middle. This is because half of 10, the max visible pages is 5, so we show 5 pages before and after the current page. I'll create a function called page number, which takes these three information, total, max, and current page, and it is supposed to return an array of numbers representing the visible pages. The first thing we need to know is what is half, and we need the from and the two pages as well. For now, the 2 is the max and from is 2 minus max. So if we want to show 10 pages, it will start from 1 to 10 since we will ignore 0. I have to check two things. First, if the current page is at the end, else we check if current page is not below half, meaning it is in the very initial pages. So if current plus half is greater or equal to total, the 2 become the total. For example, if we have 100 pages and the current page is 96, we would show pages from 90 to 100. And for the other case, the 2 is simply the current plus half. So if we are at the page 7, we show pages 2 to 12. So 7 is in the middle. Now we return an array using array from method. I have a whole video talking about the array from and several videos on array methods in general. Link below. For the first part, we set an object with length of value max, meaning create an array of this many items. The from method takes a function, a second argument, which we can use to populate the array. It works like array map method. And for this, we return the index plus the from, and to make sure we don't start from zero, we add one to the index. If we try this, we can say we have 100 pages, we want max of 10 visible, and we start from one and we use an array with numbers one through 10. Same if I say we start from five. Then if I say eight, it gives me four through 13, where eight is the fifth number. If we start from 98, it gives me 90 to 100. And if I say 92, it gives me 88 through 97, where 92 is the fifth in the list. 
Now let's take care of the button interaction. I'll create a constructor function for pagination buttons, which takes same arguments, which max visible is 10 by default and current page is one. I'll instantiate it with 100 and use the default for max and current page. First thing I do is create pages using page number function. We need to track the current page button, which I'll initialize with no. I'll expose a public function to render, which takes the container where we want to add the page buttons to, which by default will be the document body. Now let's create this HTML markup from JavaScript, which will be the div container with class of pagination buttons. Now in render, I'll just append child in, on the container inside the render method. I'll just comment out the markup, then call the render. And to check if it rendered, I'll set text content in the container and voila. Now we need a function that creates our buttons and it takes a label for the button and a class. Inside, I'll create a button and the text content will be the label and for the class will be the page button and we append the class, then I'll return the button. So my strategy for this is I'll generate the buttons, render them, and only update attributes and label on action. So I'll create a map for the button where the keys will be the buttons and the values will be the function that updates the button. Because maps respect the order of insertion, we need to set the buttons in the same order we will render them. Then we set the buttons by calling the function and passing the label and class. And first we want is the start page. And for the value will be the function that gets called with the button and for now it does nothing. We repeat the same for previous page, next and end page button. Now we'll go over the page numbers and create the button element passing page number as label. And for the class I need to check if the current page is the same as the page number. Now for this current page I'll set active class otherwise empty string. We set the button and this should be all. The cool thing about maps is you can iterate using the for each method. By the way, I have a video dedicated to map, which you should check next link below. For now, let's just log the X and Y and you will notice that X, the value is the function and Y, the key is the button. We only care about the button, so we will just append the button to the pagination buttons container. Now, if we check, we will see the buttons rendered the way we had in the HTML before. Before we proceed, the append child will trigger DOM changes on every button. So what we can do is create a document fragment, which is not rendered. And we can attach all the buttons to it and not causing a DOM update on every button. Then we just append the fragment to the pagination buttons container, which will be a single DOM update. Fragment is great for when you want to create and iterate over many elements without any rendering, then you go ahead and append them to the arm in a single action. Now let's handle the update part. If we think about it, the first, last, previous and next page buttons only update to be disable or enable. The number buttons update the content and the class only, and that's about it. To handle the disable update, I'll create a collection of methods for each button, which return whether the button should be disabled or not. So we know the start page button should be disabled if the first page number in the list is one. For previous, it is disabled if the current page is the first one, meaning there's no more previous page to go to. The end page button is disabled if last page number in the list is equal to the total pages, meaning it is at the end of the pages. And finally, the next page button is disabled if the current page is equal to total pages, meaning there's no more pages to go to. For our create button function, I'll add a third argument for whether it is disabled or not and use it to mark the button disabled. Now, when we set the buttons, we call the respective function. For the number page buttons, it is always enabled, so I'll set false. If we look the render result, we see the first and previous button are now disabled because we are in the beginning and we can go back to it anything. The end and next page buttons are both enabled, which makes sense. Now let's handle when these buttons get clicked. So I'll add a fourth argument for the function to call when the button gets clicked. And when they get clicked, I'll simply call the function with the event. This function should take care of updating the current page number. But I want to expose a function to the outside that we can call from JavaScript with the page number 
if you want to go to a specific page which i can call when the click happens as well it takes the new page number which by default will be the current page number and inside i'll update current page number and generate new page numbers and for each button i'll call the button update function with the button as we are expecting on these parts right here these are this function that do nothing for now i'll call this update from the click event handler too then let's take care of these functions for the start button it should get current page to one for previous page it should set it to minus one for page numbers buttons i'll create a dedicated function which since we set the number as text content of the button we can rely on it to get the text content from the event target and set it as current page and we'll convert it to number before that for the next page button it should be current page plus one and finally for the end page button it should set total page count as current page i'll add a console log to the update function so we can see it working and when i click the button we see the current page number logged but nothing happens because we are not doing anything in this update functions for the start page button update function we simply have to update whether it is disabled or not so when that happens i'll call the respective function and use the result to update the disable attribute i'll do that for all the non-number buttons as well when i click these buttons we see these buttons go from disable to enable depending on the button click now let's handle the page number update and for that i'll create a dedicated function which is a function that takes the index and return a function that takes a button and do the update we have created a closure and i have a video explaining this which i'll leave the link below as well now i'll call this function with this button index and it will return the function to update the button this is so we encapsulate the index information for that button to use in the update function inside the updated button text content with the number at the index position in the pages array and if the page number happens to be the current page number i'll remove the active class from the current active button then set class active to this button set this button as current page button and add focus to it as well this won't work for now because we never set the initial current page button so here when we set the button if it is the current page i'll set that button as the current page button now if we try this we see the buttons update magically which is dope one thing i don't like is that the page 100 here label is off center so i'll set display flex and center it if you go to google.com we can see same page buttons which works similarly For the final touch it would be great to get an event for when the page changes on the javascript side in case i want to react to the change but first look if i call update with the page number i want it simply changes accordingly i'll expose an on change method which takes a handler function and i'll set a change listener on the pagination buttons container of change passing it the handler because this is a div container the change event is not native so when the click happen and right after the update call i'll dispatch a change event of change and also set the value of the container to be the current page number now if i set our own change listener and log the target value we will see it log the current page every time i click any button let me first remove this other log we had here and it's all good now let me know what you think in the comments please help me grow this channel by liking this video to support me subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything once again thanks for watching catch you in the next one bye bye